I love John Pertwee, the third Doctor's outfits, lovely velvet jackets, and frilly shirts. I feel a connection to him. Our Doctors are the only two who dress like sluts. He laughs. Now, I can never imagine now watching the three Doctors when William Hartnell's on that screen, looking at his successors, Troughton and Pertwee, and going, hmm, so you're my replacements, eh? A dandy and a slut? <laughs> TARDIS has gone pink. For Warner Brothers, they're releasing the Barbie movie starring Margot Robbie and Doctor Who superfan Ryan Gosling. That comes out in a few days' time. And they're doing their European tour. They're in London right now. And they've got a pink TARDIS. Uh, Shooty Gatwa doing the rounds there, doing the press junkets and everything. Pink TARDIS. Imagine if the classic series did that. Couldn't possibly imagine. Wait, Ryan Gosling's actually... Yeah, Ryan Gosling is unironically a massive Doctor Who superfan. Ryan Gosling was, like, in pre-production, was writing his directorial debut. I think it was called Lost River. And he was working in a hotel room. And on a TV in the background was the Pandorica Opens, the Series 5 story. And Matt Smith was doing the speech at Stonehenge. And Ryan Gosling was like, that actor's really, really good. I'm going to hire him for my film. And then that's how Matt Smith winds up in Lost River. And then Ryan Gosling becomes a Doctor Who superfan. One second, where's the photo of him in sh in the shooty shirt with the cyber devil artwork? Ryan Gosling, Doctor Who superfan, turning up on the set of Barbie with this shirt on from Matthew Purchase. It's even got the little watermark in the middle as well, just printed that design on, on the shirt and wore it to set and Shooty Gatwood posted it on, on social media. So yeah, basically Ryan Gosling's chances of being in a Doctor Who story are now like a solid 70 to 80%. Anyway, we'll talk about that another time. But for this press junket, for this tour, Shooty Gatwood is conquering the world. They've got an interview for Rolling Stone magazine, including the cover. Look at that artwork there. Who is Shooty Gatwood? The Doctor is ready to talk Barbie, sex education, and why he's the perfect choice to play the BBC's iconic Time Lord. Shuti Gatwa is playing the 15th Doctor, making his introduction, presumably at the end of the 60th anniversary specials, with a proper first story that's going to be broadcast around the festive season on the BBC, Disney Plus internationally. And we're going to go through the Rolling Stone interview. Now, there is some stuff here about sex education. There's some stuff here about Barbie as well, but we're mainly going to be focusing on the Doctor Who stuff. This is a write-up, an interview by Alison Rumfit, who interviewed Shuti Gatwa over the course of several days. And there's some really interesting tidbits here for Doctor Who. So according to this interview, Shuti Gatwa says, My Doctor is emotionally vulnerable. He hides it with humour, but he's lonely, says Gatwa of his forthcoming reinvention of the ever-changing Time Lord. I can't say much more than that. I don't want to spoil anything. But he's also energetic. The poor cameraman struggled to keep up. And also you've got these incredible photos as well from this Rolling Stone photo shoot. As you can see, this is Shooty Gatwa presumably kicking the eye stalk off of a Dalek. Absolutely glam. Iconic. I would like to see, unironically, Patrick Troughton try and pull off this look. Superb stuff. Awesome photos. To hear Gatwa tell the story of his casting, it almost sounds like he was granted a wish. One day, he emailed his agent saying he wanted to play a role like Willy Wonka or The Doctor. Side note, how good would Shooty Gatwa be as Willy Wonka? I know that they've already filmed the new Wonka film with Timothy Chalamet. In fact, the, the trailer went up the other day and actually it looked pretty good. But can they like reshoot it? Can they do, can, can they do like a deep fake and just get shooting out of his face on Timothy Chamolet's body? That, that we have the technology, right? Anyway, he wanted to play a role like Willy Wonka or the Doctor. And just a week later, he was asked to audition for the part of the Time Lord. To prepare, Gatwa spent a week watching every Doctor Who episode since its 2005 revival. Although he had enjoyed the show previously, he never considered himself a habitual fan. He emerged from that binge-watching week, a die-hard Whovian. I fell in love with it, he enthuses, and he means it. There is undoubtedly a special quality about Doctor Who that's hard to deny. When you watch it, you forget all your troubles, says Gatwa. You go to space or to another time, you have adventures. That's a good summation of the show. But yeah, I like that confirmation that he was never really a fan. Or he maybe watched a few episodes of Doctor Who before his audition. But between his audition and his casting, he watched every single Revival series episode. 
Like we've had this discussion before on the live stream that you've uh, you've got your Christopher Ecclestons, or your Sylvester McCoys, who didn't really watch Doctor Who, didn't really care for Doctor Who for other reasons. Eccleston was out playing footy with his friends when he was a kid when Doctor Who was on. Sylvester McCoy, according to his season 24 collection set in conversation with Matthew Sweet, saying that he was uh, he was doing matinee theatre performances when Doctor Who was on, so he would never watch it. So he didn't really know anything about the show before auditioning for it. It seems like Shuti Gatwa is in that camp. But that does not mean he will not be an awesome Doctor. Matt Smith was also in a similar camp. I think he just said that he watched the Tomb of the Cybermen when he was cast to try and figure out the role of the Doctor. Not every actor, of course, can be a super fan. Not every Doctor can be a David Tennant or a Peter Capaldi or a Colin Baker. But there we go. Now we know what's happening. A big part of the show's post-2005 story revolves around the Doctor having survived a devastating war that wiped out the rest of his people. This is a plot point that has since been undone and then redone. Its current status in the canon is somewhat unclear. This is the most uh, polite way that you could ever phrase this sentence. <laughs> well done, Rolling Stone. That's superb. <laughs> but, it's this that, uh, uh, but it's this that Gatwa latched onto. Because in that storyline, he was able to see a reflection of his own life. As a child, Gatwa and his family fled Rwanda, escaping the genocide against the Tutsi minority. They settled in Scotland. This person survived a genocide. This person fits in everywhere and nowhere. I am the Doctor. The Doctor is me. I decided that I had to get this role, says Gatwa. That's pretty outstanding uh, in terms of like, we'll, we'll touch upon this later in terms of like what it means to truly be the best person to play the doctor or you know when they say forget diversity get the best person for the job which is often just a way to avoid having a proper conversation about diversity in media we'll talk about that later but this is an awful lot of loaded subtext here in terms of the character and i'm interested in knowing because <laughs> the canon the current status of, of gallifrey is somewhat unclear so it'll be interesting to know what rusty davis does moving forward with that shooting out talks about enjoying theater and uh, all of the smaller scale productions before he exploded in popularity with sex education, then Barbie and Doctor Who. He does seem to miss the smaller scale work that theatre afforded him. Quote, it kept me warm and it held me at night even if I was broke, but I'm planning on getting back to it next year after I finish season two of Doctor Who, he says. So there's been some rumours circulating that Shooty Gatwa is only going to do two seasons. I say only, it's still like two to three years of filming work so that you know there's nothing to sniff at and that they're filming series 14 and series 15 almost back to back they're going to be taking a six to eight week break after filming series 14 to do the next festive special and then do series 14 uh, and then do series 15 that's the prevailing rumor right now this could be why i mean after sex education is now winding down the the fourth and last season comes out in september i believe september october time on netflix barbie is going to come out this summer going to be an unabashed smash hit i'm sure and then he's also the doctor he's going to be getting a million and one offers his agent is going to be buried underneath of letters and phone calls and emails asking for shooty to be in their project so he's going to be an actor in very high demand so maybe he will only want to do the two seasons and then come back to it later after a stint or two in theater kind of similar to um uh what david tennant did didn't david tennant do midsummer night's dream then come back and do some doctor who filming i could be remembering that completely wrong maybe it was another shakespeare production or something else at the globe but that's that has been done before but whether or not he's just doing two seasons and going or taking two seasons and then doing a hiatus we're not sure. Season 14 is not even finished filming yet, so this is putting the cart way before the horse in terms of a discussion. Gatwa's stage role is just as impressive as his screen credits. In 2016, he was in A Midsummer Night's Dream, his favourite Shakespeare play, Hamlet. No, it's, um, he did Hamlet after filming... No, one second, let me remember. He, he won the Royal Television Society Award while doing Hamlet, and it was there he announced he would no longer be the Doctor after the specials. Was he still filming? I can't remember when that was. Maybe, yeah, maybe that was it. Maybe I'm getting my wires crossed there. But anyway, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, I love that it's about fairies and lovers, he says. And of course, it's so sexual. We give this to kids in schools and you're worried about drag queens. Now, Shakespeare's theatre performances, his plays, uh, are basically queer literature because Shakespeare is now basically commonly accepted amongst academics and theatre scholars to have been bisexual. And even in like Coriolanus, you've got a character who is uh, a male character who is like adamantly in love with Coriolanus who 
And, you know, like I said, we, we study Shakespeare as kids. We study it in school. The man who's got a boy crush on Coriolanus in Shakespeare's play has a wet dream dreaming about Coriolanus. So, you know, there's some queer literature there in Shakespeare, you know. Uh, when it comes to Hamlet and Horatio, you know, they talk about and adore each other more than Hamlet talks about and adores his wife, okay? Very queer coded Shakespeare production, so let's just, let's just forget that. Uh, there's a clear through line between the sex education, both ensembles, etc. Frolicking in the forest. So more sex education stuff. I won't talk too much about this one. He talks about how his family were religious, which made them watching sex education a little bit difficult. Uh, and that he feels like he's sort of uh, um, gone away from his religion. I do compare thee to a summer's day as addressed to a man. True. Yes. It's like when people say, why can't kids, uh, why can't plays be so innocent anymore? And so, you know, we teach the kids like Shakespeare and it's like, ha. So, so gay. Uh, it also gave him a rude awakening working on sex education uh, to uh, the reality of working in TV. Being on it fast tracked me into the downsides of this industry. I remember being told by an executive producer that white people wouldn't understand my character, Eric, which incensed me. There's an entire show there for white people to understand, uh, which is, you know, you know, as Roger Ebert said, movies, or in this case, TV are machines that generate empathy. So you don't have to be white to relate to or empathize or understand what eric goes through over the course of those seasons of sex education gatwa clearly thinks hard about things like this it can lead him to often feeling conflicted a recent example is when he took up the offer to perform at the king's coronation partly because he felt a strong desire to be on stage instead of on tv and film sets i did feel an unease about it though he admits we're in a cost of living crisis and i'm going to a giant house to perform plus you know the diamonds in that house all of that was sitting within me, but it was also an opportunity to celebrate the arts. I wanted to celebrate the arts. I wanted to be on stage. I wanted to do Shakespeare. I'm actually kind of amazed that he did comment on this because I remember when it was announced that he was going to be doing a Shakespeare monologue or a duologue in this case uh, during the King's coronation earlier this year. And I remember Stan Twitter getting very, very ups upset, even though I'm pretty sure that as the doctor and the coronation being broadcast on the BBC and partly organised by the BBC as well. They probably wanted one of their most prolific young actors who was experienced in performing Shakespeare to do something Shakespearean at the coronation. I do not think that Shooter Gatwa had much of a say as to whether or not he would be able to perform at the coronation. I don't know if it would have been contractually obligated. As far as I understand it, top talent, top names at the BBC who have played the Doctor do have things like that in their contracts, which the BBC can force them to do or not at the BBC's discretion. But I'm very surprised he commented on this, as well as the, you know, the cost of living crisis, the diamonds in that house. I can imagine him saying this. Like, I can imagine the intonation of his voice when he's talking about this. But he put his love of the arts uh, above that and representing Shakespeare on a global stage. Returning to the topic of religion, when asked if he considers himself religious, Gatwa seems a little bit uncomfortable with the question. I have faith, he says, before taking a long pause. I'm about to change topic when he continues. I was raised in church. Both my parents are traditional around on Christians. I love my upbringing in church. It's a big part of my identity. However, a long time ago, I fell out of love with it all. I still feel a connection to something greater than us, though. I can't live my life without it. I have to believe something will save us from AI. Uh, so growing up in Scotland, being a Rwandan-born uh, immigrant... Uh, that was isolating. I have to discover myself in, in a deeper way. Not that there's a disconnect between me and the black British community, because I am black and I am British, but there aren't any Rwandans. He's talking about growing up in rural Scotland. Certainly, there weren't any in Scotland. Church was how we found a community. Church people can be the kindest people, and they can be shockingly cruel. These days, Gatwa is more interested in astrology. Now, not gonna lie, the astrology bit, <laughs> he's a Libra sun, Gemini moon, Scorpio... I cringed a little bit. Whatever, whatever helps, you know, whatever he enjoys. I'm, that's not for me. But that's absolutely fine. He says that uh, astrology probably filled a gap that religion left in me. I couldn't put my faith in an old book that had been used for so much evil. I found astrology so accepting. It helps me accept my own darkness and other people's darkness too. I had a very bad breakup. I ended up being homeless after it. People will probably think this sounds so silly, but once the grieving was done, once again, I'd found a safe home again, typing in our respective star signs and seeing all this writing that described so accurately what the problem was between us. It led me to be able to forgive them. I understand their motives now. I don't forget their actions, but I can forgive their motives. And underneath this, Chad photo of Shooter Gatwa 
in a cowboy hat in the awesome outfit that we saw in the costume reveal photos back in November, December time last year. Feels like so long ago. But this is a bit I wanted to talk about here. Had a bad breakup, ended up becoming homeless after it. Now, there's a lot of discourse, quote unquote, when it comes to who is the best actor for the role of the Doctor. And often this is something that is only brought up to dissuade casting decisions that don't conform to the cis white het perspective, okay? The idea that, uh, oh, Jodie Whittaker's the Doctor, oh, why don't you get the best person for the job, implying that Jodie Whittaker is not the best person for the job, or the best person for Chris Chibnall's interpretation of the show, or that Jodie Whittaker was not already, before being the Doctor, an insanely qualified actor. Shooter Gatwa is also an insanely qualified actor, but also, I feel like with this Rolling Stone write-up, which is a brilliant interview, by the by, that Shooter Gatwa, through his own life experience, is able to, already in his life, embody so much about who the Doctor is. Uh, someone who had to flee and escape from the genocide of his people. Someone who, at one point, was homeless as well. Who literally finds meaning in the stars, in astrology, traveling through space, of course. Insanely fashion conscious as well which i think is the most perfect aspect when it comes to the casting of the doctor insanely theatrical honestly just from this interview i cannot think of anybody who is as perfect for the role in terms of life experience as shooty gatwa like i'm not saying that you need to have the life experience of something resembling a time lord in order to play the doctor Obviously not. Not everyone can be Tom Baker. However, you know, these lived experiences can help to inform your characterization, can breathe new life into an established character. Someone who, when Shooter Gatwa gets around to it, will be in their 15th plus incarnation, if you, you know, count Joe Martin, count John Hurt, etc, etc. And I think that Gatwa brings so much naturally already to the table. And... According to what we're getting in this interview, a lot of that subtext from his own life is going to come out in the 15th Doctor, and I am absolutely stoked for that. I cannot wait to see this. This interview has made me insanely hyped for Shooty Gatwa, and just just generally just his future. I'm really, really looking forward to Sex Education Series 4, looking forward to Barbie, looking forward to Doctor Who, everything he does next. I love that both Shooty and Russell have their own experiences in forming their take on the Doctor post-Time War, Russell with the AIDS crisis and Gatlet and Gatwa with Escaping Rwanda. Absolutely true. Now, obviously, without asking Russell himself, it's unclear if the survivor's guilt of surviving the AIDS epidemic informed Russell's work or was a deliberate part of Russell's work by having the Ninth Doctor be a damaged loner survivor from the Time War, wearing a leather jacket, something that Russell T. Davis used to often wear all the time in his youth. You know, you write what you know. These things, can, whether consciously or unconsciously, end up slipping into the work proper. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Shooty brings to this as well. I also think that this interview as well, very tastefully done. You know, he mentions that he had a bad breakup. He, of course, is super fashion conscious. He talks about having an issue with religion while growing up as well, implying, you know, I think that maybe the implication here is that Shooty Gatwa is not straight. It obviously does not matter at all, but the fact that there is the ambiguity up in the air, the fact that Shooty Gatwa is not, you know, does not want to talk about it, because it's frankly none of our fucking business. Uh, and I'm glad that Rolling Stone did not try and, uh, at least with this interview, try and out him or try and get some sort of personal scoop from Gatwa. He can talk about his personal life as much or as little as he wants in this capacity. Also, really interesting stuff, how um, he auditioned for a different role for Barbie, didn't get it, but was, was then called back by Greta Gerwig, the writer and director of Barbie, to play a version of Ken. Gatwa also says, I've always felt I'm not masculine enough, not whatever enough for these directors. I can play that, but when they see that I'm not that, he trails off. Thankfully, he was wrong. The Leo Libra vibe was just there on that Zoom meeting with Greta Gerwig. This is the bit, you know, like I said, I'm not into astrology. That's a little cringe, but you know, whatever, whatever helps uh, Shooty. You know, astrology can be fun but for the Leo Libra vibe. I don't even know what that means. One of the best lives of my life was when Margot Robbie took all the Barbies and all the Kens out in London to see Magic like <laughs> to see Magic Mike live. That was. I don't know how I made it through any filming in the week after. My voice was gone from screaming so much. <laughs> 
<laughs> there was some, there were people who were chatting to Shooty Gatwa on was it last Saturday, saying that uh, uh, Shooty Gatwa was it was it was partying in France the night before, and was <laughs> nursing a hangover on set the next day. He's he's a party animal. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very nervous. I have a lot of sleepless nights where I lie awake feeling my heart beat. It's hard to imagine the pressure he must suddenly be feeling, but it's understandable nevertheless. Doctor Who is a science fiction family show that has run on and off in some form for 60 years. It's also a nexus of so much of British culture. Like James Bond, the Doctor is a character through which British, uh, through which Britain learns to understand itself as much an icon of our changing times as a fictional being. The show's connection to British identity means tensions can run high and fans can be cruel at times, seemingly overprotective, because they feel that the show is something they own they can also be bigoted in the most predictable ways uh reminder when shooty gato was cast as the 15th doctor he and his family had to hire 24 7 security because conservatives just do not want black people on tv screens anyway quote i'm the first black man to play this character the british press can be very mean he says th to the reaction of his casting but gatwa is determined to remain steadfast in the face of criticism i just have to focus on the job and stay true to what the doctor is a mad alien scientist who has adventures and cares about everyone thankfully the new doctor who team are helping him handle the pressure that comes with the new role ross t davis has been amazing too he calms me down he's such an earth sign god i can get very anxious but therapy helps They've, and they've made sure that I have put time aside to have my sessions. So Shooter Guy was having therapy sessions, which I think is a very cool thing to be uh, to be doing, and also very cool to be transparent about. Gatwa has also drawn support from some of the past doctors. He has met Peter uh, Capaldi, David Tennant, and Matt Smith in person. He ran into Smith at a party before he'd been announced for the role, and tipsily said, "I'm following in your footsteps," a remark which baffled Smith until Gatwa was officially confirmed as the new doctor. Gatwa tells me that Tennant set up a group chat where some of the previous actors stay in contact with one another. Of course it was Tennant who set that up. What a chad. Uh, and they've all offered Gatwa support and advice on dealing with the press. After all, the only people who can really know what it's like to be the Doctor are those who have been the Doctor. Once you cast, you'll always be a part of the show's long history. So this was the bit that got Twitter absolutely reeling. Doctor Who is all about reinvention, and with Gatwa, this bold reimagining can be seen in his aesthetic interpretation of the offbeat time-travelling alien. Fashion might not be the first thing people associate with Doctor Who, but what the Doctor wears is an intrinsic part of the show. Tom Baker's long scarf, David Tennant's pinstripe suit, those are things that people immediately associate with it. But Gatwa's Doctor might well be the first fashion-conscious one. I do take issue with this framing. I mean, you cannot tell me that Sylvester McCoy in the question mark like cardigan is not a fashion conscious doctor get out of here Th i will not have this slander on the rolling stone website mccoy appreciation the day Ross T. Davis invited me to meet everybody, they asked me what sort of costume I wanted. I showed them this Ralph Lauren collection that was in partnership with historically black colleges in America, he says. I love those pieces. They're so preppy and so black. But then they asked what else, because they'd been thinking about lots of outfits, almost a different one each week, which is new. I love it. The Doctor has travelled all of time and space. They're going to have a sick wardrobe. Not that previous Doctors were badly dressed, mind. Quote, I love John Pertwee, the third Doctor's outfits, lovely velvet jackets, and frilly shirts. I feel a connection to him. Our Doctors are the only two who dress like sluts. He laughs. Now, I can never imagine now watching the three Doctors when William Hartnell's on that screen, looking at his successors, Troughton and Pertwee, and going, hmm, so you're my replacements, eh? A dandy and a slut? I... <laughs> when you... <laughs> Stephen Noonan, if you're watching this, the William Hartnell big Finnish actor, we're... <laughs> I, I want to hear the first Doctor. <laughs> I'm reeling. <laughs> the idea of multiple outfits has led to a fun press cycle where Twitter is regularly treated to a photo shoot of the Doctor and his companion in a completely new style each time. The most notable of these was a swinging 60s look where Gatwa sporting a blue striped suit and an afro. 
the hair and makeup department have been incredible he, ex he exclaims claire williams and my own makeup artist bella who is an old friend worked so well together in creating my looks originally we weren't going to have the afro but bella convinced me and i'm very glad she did it's such a shot into the bloodstream it's a statement the doctor is fucking black what a cool note to end that on and uh, yeah i think that's so true as well like in terms of just making a statement and that statement in particular as we've said shooting at was race and his identity is uh, apparently an intrinsic part of his identity something he is very very passionate about not only just from where he's come from but where he's going as well like his outfit for the doctor being inspired by a partnership with historically black colleges in america the ralph lauren collection and that's going to be inspiring his costumes for at least series 14 and presumably series 15 moving forward you're in <laughs> you're in french <laughs> <laughs> seriously you're in for a jolly good smack bottom and <laughs> vibes are different <laughs> the vibes are different <laughs> anyway cowboy hat shooty gat wearing hats shooty gat wearing hats gat wearing hats gat wearing hats this was an incredible write-up from rolling stone there's some extra stuff in there about barbie about sex education but i do recommend going onto the Rolling Stone website and reading this write-up by Alan, uh, and reading this write-up by Alison Rumfit, a astonishingly good interview that has honestly, I was hyped before, but this interview has made me feel especially, especially hyped for what Shooting Out was going to be bringing to the role of the 14th Doctor. This also makes me really hope there are some black writers in his era. Uh, fingers crossed, hopefully. Because it seems like Rusty Davis might be writing most of the scripts. So. He's got the Jojo post. He has. Massive Jojo energy. I don't watch Jojo. So I don't know if there's any word for it. But yeah. Please don't say. I can say whatever I want. This is my stream. I wonder what the monsters are for series 14. Uh, Ryan Gosling in a giant slug outfit. Is my best guess. But yeah, check out this write-up from Rolling Stone. I'm not sure if I've got anything else to add apart from Pink Tardis, Pink Tardis. The official Doctor Who YouTube channel, which you should subscribe to, nine hours ago, posted this clip on their YouTube account from the Happiness Patrol, painting the Tardis pink. Basically, in the Happiness Patrol story, I forget the name of the planet or the place that they go to, but basically you're not allowed to be upset or sad or anything. So the dreary blue TARDIS is reported to the police, the Happiness Patrol, and is then painted pink. <laughs> Professor, look what they've done. Yes, it looks rather good. <laughs> that is not a straight doctor. Come on, that's a fashion conscious doctor. Like I said, I will not have this Rolling Stone slander. <laughs> His first reaction to the pink TARDIS. Mm, that looks rather good. 